<laughs> I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and it's actually Josh's suggestion. It's actually an idea its Apple came up with like a year ago. I was, I was gonna say, literally years. Josh has been waiting for me to do this for so long. Okay, so anyway, if you don't know why we're here, uh, today I want to talk about and show you the 20 hardest stomp knees that I did for 100 Ways to Stomp Knee. And um, they're ridiculous. I don't know how much of this series everyone has seen, and I don't know if you've ever slowed down these clips and actually just taken a second <laughs> to look at what I'm doing, but it's so crazy. I'm gonna watch the clips and I'm gonna explain to you the process, because I feel like every stomp knee I've done has a story. And I actually have captured a lot of these stories on stream, because I did grind a lot of these out for hours uh, on my stream during COVID when I had nothing better to do. Um, so, this should be really fun. <laughs> Oh, really quick, I forgot to say at the beginning of the stream that there's a very fun announcement at the end of this YouTube video that I edited, so stay for that. I guess we just should jump right into it and we'll see how long I talk about all these. I have no idea, I have no plan. Except I have a list right here in front of me of the 20 hardest that I tried to conceptualize today, although it was really hard, because these ideas are so different, all of them. The ideas had to be crazier to be original as it continued. So most of the harder ones come later, but this first one is actually from video number one, and it is stomp knee number 46 called the Bab Chef Jr. This clip right here, an up B drift is actually very hard right here. Getting this edge cancel is not as trivial as it looks, uh, so it's actually just really precise. But I do think this one is a good example of the baseline of when I started this series, this is what I considered hard, okay? Because it took me, you know, it took maybe 30 tries. Maybe I was sitting there for 10, 15 minutes. I was like, man, this that's tough, right? And then I finally got it. I was like, cool, move on with my day. I had no idea what I was getting into, okay? This is video one. Number two is a little harder. Let's just watch it first. <laughs> okay, so. So, nothing fancy here. This is one of those that I think I got really lucky with. I only tried this, you know, for five minutes. And I feel like if I tried it right now, there'd be no shot. There'd be, I could not. Look at this. That's ridiculous drift. And Randall's moving up. And then right here, he moves backwards. Like, how did I manage to do that? I really, I have no idea. Fox is programmed to air dodge as soon as possible. And so the speed at which I have to do these things is sometimes just so ridiculous, and that's part of the difficulty. Number 18's next, and this one is called Dave's Hot Chicken Mild Number 4 Add Cheese. As you can see, I was kind of running out of name ideas in Stomp Knee Part 5. <laughs> this one it has the same thing with the up B being extremely hard and way harder than it looks to get an edge cancel with, especially like when you're near the peak. Because after, the, when when people recover like in game, when top plowkins recover, after the peak of up B you have a lot of drift and that's where you get the fun edge cancels and stuff. But if you do it in a random spot like right there, this is when it gets really tricky. Like right after he does the front flip, the drift just really is is confusing. And then out of this drift, I have to do like a frame one or two double jump. So I get a no impact land right here on top of this temple building, right? That's, that's, that's quick, okay? It, there's a little bit of leeway compared to other ones. This just took me way longer than I expected. I remember doing these up bees on temple for like, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. And it doesn't look like it should have, but that's just, that's the nature of it. And we can start to see how difficult the timing is because this is the first frame of Fox's air dodge. And so yes, you can argue that it's not true because a shine here, a shine here would make me miss, but I don't think any players are doing a frame one shine out of hit stun. I just, I don't think that's happening. Um, so next, and this one has a clip. We're, get, we're getting into the ones that have a little bit of history. So let's go ahead and look at <laughs> what I looked like three years ago. <laughs> so this is, this is the present and Look at that, Legends. <laughs> the pivot drop kick Randall cancel in big one. I was probably just grinding this on my stream with no shatters for like an hour and a half. This clip is legendary. This, 
this one really um set the this one set the bar. See how quick that is right there? Oh <laughs> Yes! The pivot dropkick Randall Cancel and big one. <laughs> Anyway, we can ignore my cringe, but <laughs> that clip is sick. <laughs> We're gonna be watching a lot of these in slow motion. This save state right here is after I had done a regular getup from ledge and turned Falcon around. And this sets up a pivot drop that's really consistent. I stomp Fox, so I'm already ready for the pivot drop. So there's the setup. I do this pivot drop and I fast fall so I don't grab ledge. It is such a quick input to do that. So I've turned around and I'm fast falling as fast as I can to Randall. And I have to time this perfectly so my Falcon Kick hits Randall and cancels as soon as possible. So I was doing this and just missing Randall over and over again because I needed to get it as late as possible before he hits the wall. I had barely enough time. Double jump, wall jump. And then again, Fox does start the air dodge right here, but it still managed to hit. So I counted it. Next up, I gotta find it. We have the Randall Tass Blaster. Now, the um, the Tass joke in the name, this is a, a trend that I started in the second video where I would do dash dancing as fast as possible. So as you can imagine, I tried to dash dance on Randall <laughs> as long as I could, <laughs> which is so hard. Check it out. <laughs> I don't think I said it, this one is I did all my numbering wrong, what the heck? I made a mistake on my list here. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> this The list I made for the 20 hardest stomp knees goes number 20, 19, 18, 17, 19, 18, 17, 16, and then it goes down to one. So I gave you some bonuses, okay? I, I'm doing like 23 on accident. Rating these was really hard. I used two me three methods to rate these. I, I'm looking at what I did in game and trying to understand how hard it is. And then I'm looking at the difficulty that I gave it as a genuine way to understand how I felt after I hit it. And then I'm looking at this, the Twitch clip. If I have a Twitch clip, how hard I popped off says a lot. This one I don't have the Twitch clip, but I did mention an existential crisis and look at this dash dance. <laughs> so I do think I was probably sitting here for 30 minutes just like tiring my thumb out trying to get that perfect dash dance. Number, number 18, real number 18 is from the second video. It's called the Coach Gabe Special. Oh, they're back to back. It's actually the next one. Yeah, um, Coach Gabe is a is a player from Falcon Discord, and he recommended this when I was showing some stomp knees and talking to people in the Discord about it. This is a really crazy edge cancel. So you can do a stomp here and double jump and drift backwards to this platform. And it's, it's really tight, that edge cancel. And then the edge cancel going back down to side plat is even more difficult, I would argue. It's like, it's just two of the most precise drifts back to back. And it is, I remember doing this for so long. 17 might be my favorite in the entire series because it's when I first got really creative. God, this one is so good. And I have to shout out Axe for this because I got the idea straight from his gameplay. So here we go. I have an interesting reputation, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I created it, so... Oh! <laughs> it's not supposed to be cool, man! <laughs> that clip's actually hilarious. This one is really hard just because it's so obscure. Who knows how to do this, right? And then I needed the perfect setup. I needed to make his DI perfect, you know, right percent. So I had to get this nipple spike right when the barrel was underneath me and the angle of the rotating barrel had to be perfect to send me straight into the rock. So this setup itself probably took like an hour to get the actual idea prepared. And then I had to try it who knows how many times. I'm already launching out here. <laughs> Look at this frame. <laughs> like, like if I showed you this, would you think that this was a stomp knee combo? I, I don't think so, and that's why I love it so much. It was so lucky that he flew off the right side, because that's twice as funny. Uh, this is, it's just perfection. On to number 16, which, 
uh, on the flip side, might be my least favorite in the top 20. So as you can see here, I would rather eat tin foil than to try this again. It's terrible. I really didn't like doing it. If you don't know what a lemon drop is, it is a dash attack, and then you fall off the stage and flip the other way, like a, like a pivot drop or something. So you can notice I do a dash attack right here, and then all of a sudden I'm facing towards the stage while I'm falling off. The spacing of this dash attack is so irritatingly specific. Why is it like one pixel? I don't understand. So yeah, right after this dash attack, you kind of just have to flick the stick and pray that you get it on the right frame. Because it is a one or two, like I swear it's one frame only that'll make Falcon turn around here. So I had to have pixel perfect spacing on my stupid dash attack and then just get lucky flicking the stick backwards. I think why it's my least favorite in the top 20 difficult stomp knees is because it it's not cool. It's not, it's not really that cool. Like, look at this. You know, it's okay. Never mind. I take it back. I take it back. That's sick as, that's sick as hell. This one's a bit different. So this is number 15 in difficulty. We're getting there now. This one is not skill based in any way, shape, or form. I was waiting for the apples that Wispy drops to hit Fox. I got one apple, reacted with a nice full hop knee. That's cool. I, I, I kept trying because I was like, I know Wispy can get so many apples. So I literally was doing this on stream for like three hours, just waiting for the maximum amount of apples to hit Fox. There was a moment when three apples hit Fox and that's what I was waiting for. And I was like a frame late on the knee. And I was like, <sighs> so yeah, anyway, I finally kept going and got the triple apple into knee. Looks like this. <laughs> Um, so 14 is called the Super Large Mega Knee. Before I show the clip, I want to point out that for the setup of this, I had Fox at a very specific DI as always, and I believe this block, this block right here, is missing. I had to go up there and hit it with a back air, and then reload my save state, and do this before the block respawned. This is how I got to the idea that we, that we're gonna see. So, wait, right here. Wait! No one move! No one move a muscle! No one move a muscle! <laughs> That's one of my favorite clips of my stream of all time. No, no, we need, we need 115. <laughs> it only took me like one second to hit it. <laughs> no, one, 108. <laughs> That's the only clip I have, sadly. I couldn't find the other one. But that idea, um, that idea led to me doing this one, which is just crazy right here. Oh my god, I could look at this for so long. As you can imagine, those are, those are pretty tight inputs for the wall jumps and like perfect wavelands and stuff. The sheer amount of, of wall jumps and wavelands that I snuck in there, I think is what made it really difficult. We are coming up on number 13. I will, um, let it speak for itself first. <laughs> oh. First of all, the setup for this is really difficult because I had to memorize when this block was going to time out and disappear. And then I had to time my stomp. I was looking at the clock. I'm like, I need to stomp right at 516. And it has to be such a low stomp. I'm like one frame away from hitting the ground there. Super, super quick. Zero degree wave land there. And this jump up to the block was really, really hard. This was the hardest thing because if you do a backwards like layout jump the way Falcon does, you actually, your ECB doesn't get on top of here. So I had to do a jump in place and then drift, which was proving to be really difficult. And then you just barely get, <laughs> there's no block. But yeah, you just barely get onto the block with it and then you have enough time for the taunts. And this would happen sometimes, and if I didn't time it well at the beginning, I would do the taunt and the block wouldn't disappear. So there was just so many elements here that had to work perfectly. Number 12, you can see me maturing a little bit. The stream layout has changed. I have literally begun to grow a beard uh, with how many stomp knees I've been performing at the time. That's not true though, because some of them I... Oh! <laughs> you can see how surprised I was that I actually did this. Um, let's watch it in slow motion, because this one is crazy. This one, I remember specifically. I had to focus on doing everything as fast as possible, because I kept almost getting it, and he kept air dodging, and it was so hard. 
So this stomp right here had to be like literally the lowest possible hit. And I had to do a frame one dash back, like so, so fast. Full hop here. I do the nair because then I, I teeter cancel here because my ECB shifts up above the platform. A super niche little text right there. I teeter again, I need a frame one dash back. I could have been a little faster there, but it was enough. And then here is the hardest part. You can see I'm already angling my stick down. And then I do a shield drop into like the most precise Raptor Boost ever. If you go a little bit into a platform and do a Raptor Boost, I call it a Raptor Boost Shorten because it edge cancels before the move finishes. Right here. And then I slip off with just enough time for the, the knee. This one took definitely two hours. This this absolutely took two hours, or maybe a little longer. This is the first one that was like a really hard grind. <laughs> and then at 11 here we have one that's pretty similar. Pretty similar grind. It's called the Java Chip Dipper. Man, I'm gonna explain this one before I play it, but look at the setup here. This platform is moving down and it, I had to stomp on it and edge cancel when it was like a millimeter from the floor of the stage, like just barely not there. So right when it's about to go, I had to edge cancel there. Look at how close I was. And then I had to do the, this, I, I genuinely believe this stomp me is frame perfect. Every single thing was the first actionable frame or I would not hit it. That's how it felt when I was doing this because it was, it was so hard. He air dodged out of it every time. And me and chat, I was asking my chat, like, is this even possible? Can someone task this to see if it's possible? And, and I just, I was just so stubborn and I kept doing it for like another hour or something. And yeah, I eventually did it. And if you're wondering how this ends, by the way, it's a tea drop <laughs> into a knee. So look at this at full speed. Look at this in full speed. Oh my gosh, that... This T-drop also needed the first possible frame. I had to fast fall because T-drops are not normally that fast. You have to, I have to make it super quick, obviously let go ledge as fast as possible. And Fox was air dodging and this was this, he kept dodging it right there. Oh, but finally, finally I hit it. Number 10 and number nine are they might even be the hardest two, but I'm putting them here. So number 10, obviously, we'll start there. This one's called Fakin' It. It is the first time I ever did an intentional phantom hit. I don't know why anyone would try this, actually. Um, it's obviously not something you would want to do. And uh, I learned why, because this took, this took so long. Um, the reason it's not near the top of this list is because the inputs aren't that hard. I'll show it now. The inputs aren't hard. I figured out this setup and I was like, if I just hold up on the control stick and buffer a full hop stomp, surely one of these times I'll drift it a tiny bit just with my natural human error on the stick and it'll become a phantom. And that was my whole plan going into this. So I was with my stream. I was in my stream forever just doing this. I don't have to do any drift. I'm figuring it out, right? Make something consistent at least. <gasps> oh yes! Holy crap! Obviously, the only natural progression from that idea would be to do a phantom knee. And so, uh, you guessed it, number nine is called the Danny Phantom, and it's my stomp phantom knee into knee. One interesting thing though is that this one is in the second video, and this one is in the last video, which I made eight months ago. There's like two or three years in between, I think two years between these two ideas. And that's how much harder the Phantom Knee was. So this one was so much harder because if you get, now this is the, this is the take when I actually got it. But if you get a Phantom Knee here, you can actually hit a weak knee after the Phantom Strong Knee. And that happened to me like more than once. It happened to me like maybe five times. And I was 
really struggling to find a DI where that like wouldn't happen. But as you can imagine with my diligence that I have, um, eventually we got here. Oh! Yo! It just, it just worked! Eventually. You know, eventually these things happen. It was, it was really an awesome moment. Next up we have one I called the Hot Fire Lava. This one I did off stream and I've tried to replicate it after the fact because I wanted to record it in higher quality, but I actually couldn't get it again. We're gonna, we're gonna watch this in the slowest possible speed really quick. And let's full screen it. Oh god. Y are you kidding me? I know these videos got plenty of views, but has anyone really taken the time <laughs> to watch these? So let's unpack it. Okay. Right here. I do a stomp. Who would have guessed? I teeter cancel the stomp because otherwise I wouldn't have enough time. And then I do dash back. And the dash back is because if you teeter cancel, if you're in the teeter animation and you do, um, if you do the side B, Wispy actually pushes you off, you get an aerial side B. And I didn't want that because my side B had to be grounded. So Wispy pushes and it edge cancels there and I fall down. So I had to stomp, teeter, get a little bitty dash, and then start my Raptor Boost, which is already very difficult. Right here, you have to do a precise downward angle to get a fast fall, and then hold a little bit out, and uh, edge cancel here on, this, on, the, on the ledge. Immediately when you start the edge cancel, you have to hold in the perfect amount, and then tap out at like a very specific frame, to get a wall jump. It's like, this, I, I do not know. I can't explain to you how this is possible. I don't know how I did it. This, I can only explain this one with luck as well, because I was probably just trying it for like two hours alone in my bedroom. <laughs> There's nothing better to do, I guess. Like, that's ridiculous. Absolutely nuts. Number seven is called the Wispy Woods Assist. Even in the actual edited video, this is what I said about the difficulty. I want you to play the video at 0.5 times speed and really think about this one. So we're gonna do just that, okay? We're even gonna go to 0.25. Like, <laughs> what? I hit the stomp and I have to be really close to the ground. Obviously look at that like perfect frame about to hit the ground. I get rid of all the blocks <clears throat> This wall jump is almost instantaneous. It had to be so perfectly quick because this one I was really running out of time with every attempt This waveland was oddly tricky this this does not look like Correct this waveland so it was really really weird to get used to that, but I finally hit it perfectly then here I actually sneak in a double jump. Do you see me rise right there? You can't actually see the rings for some reason. But I do a double jump right here because I didn't quite have enough height to get this side B. And the side B only edge cancels because Wispy is blowing and so the second half right here gets a little bit of a boost from him. Um, so. You know, and then I had to edge cancel me as fast as possible. <laughs> so let's watch the clip. Here's me hitting it. Look at me going Action over and over. Like <laughs> Look at this. And you can tell that air dodge is really hard. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the typical range for these ridiculous ones is like two hours. I was trying them straight for two hours. The next one I named in all caps, and I think it was out of, you know, out of the feelings that I had because I was grinding it for so long. I needed to scream in my text that I wrote uh, when I made the name. It's called Slippery Stanley Yelnats. Wild Holes reference out of nowhere. Yeah, really don't know what I was thinking with that. This was another issue of timing for this whole 
this whole experience. But finally, you know, enough enough attempts and it pays off. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I felt pretty good about that one. Woo! This one doesn't look as hard as it actually was. Um, that obviously had to be perfect on that stomp jump. This is where it gets tricky. The, the teeter cancel there is extremely hard. I've already explained how up B into a teeter or edge cancel at the peak is extremely difficult. Um, and then I had to do a perfect wave land, like at a, you know, just specific angle to get far enough. And then turn around. Like a smash turn jump there. Who, like, how did I get that, right? And then there was a handful of times, like, I got to right here and he was air dodging. You know how it is. I was like two frames late somewhere. I could have done something a tiny bit faster. Uh, so this one, I, I just grinded it out on stream for so long. This one is actually quite a popular clip on my channel. Some of you may have seen it in the video. This one I named The Malfunctioning Elevator. All these ones up at the top are are just because I had to be perfectly fast. Like, I had to waste no frames anywhere to be able to hit this knee. And this is a really good example of that. Doesn't change his amount of hits done. Yes! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> the release after you've been trying one of these for so long, it's, it's crazy. The feeling. Just the beginning is actually the craziest thing. So, I'm already edge cancel that stomp, like, so, so quickly. Last frame before I hit the ground. Again, the same idea with... Look at that frame! Look at that! The same idea of getting a falcon kick to hit Randall right before he goes into the stage. I um, mean, I was super successful with that. Grab ledge. So cool. I love that idea. My hack sashes aren't that great, but this one, it had to be really good. It had to be Wizzy style. Fox does get an air dodge in, but I am just in time. And that was... That one was ridiculous. Number four, uh, which is called the blue 2007 Toyota Corolla LE. Corolla LE. This idea I actually got from PGH Carol because I heard him say in a Discord that I was in that he wanted to do a shield break and, and edge cancel it with Wispy like during an edge guard. And that's why this is the difficulty. <laughs> but yeah, these ideas, I had to get my shield as tiny as possible and then do like the most precise timing to get it up and then have Wispy blow my shield break off of the, off of the platform. And it became the most excruciating process. These are only possible because I just keep doing them over and over. So here's the clip. Here's the victory. Frick yes! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> I was out of there. Oh shit! That, it speaks for itself. That one's, I mean, what more can I say? Top three. We got the top three. Number three out of the hardest ones is called simply Chomp. It's when I decided to do a stomp and have a clap trap spike the opponent into me as I hit a knee afterwards. I was doing this repetitively on stream for three hours with very slight variations each time, just trying to get the perfect timing of that knee. And the amount of times that I hit a weak one that killed was so irritating. And finally, against all odds, here we have it. Yes! Oh! My god! <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so perfect. Yes! Like, oh. it, is, it is everything I wanted it to be. And in that moment, that three hours of grinding was absolutely worth it. I still think it is. I wouldn't take any of this back. Any of these hours I spent on these these videos, I would not I would not redo them. Next up is number two. And I named this one the Meltdown Murphy. And uh, the clip will 
explain why. I had been doing this for, you guessed it, about two or three hours uh, with my Bob Ross cutout giving me support. And my sister had even come into the stream and like she knew I was attempting it over and over. Uh, and so she was like trying to entertain me and like boost my mood and she was just being funny with my chat and stuff. Because it was just like, it was just a fun day in my house. Um, so anyway, she's here for this. And um, <laughs> I finally got it and check it out. Imagine that the Penga Boys covered when he hits. <laughs> this is around the time Peng Boys was a Dude, I YouTube used to channel. Penji Boys in my head every time I saw that word. <laughs> yes! Oh my! <laughs> oh. oh my gosh! Zach, take a break. Yeah. Give Bob a hug. Give him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I had set up a save state to have Randall with Fox going into ledge at the uh, perfect time. I needed to hit a stomp super precisely, and I wasn't edge canceling, just needed to time it up be off of Randall perfectly. For this, I mean, just bonkers edge cancel, like what was that? Okay, it's a teeter cancel, then I can dash back right after, so I do. Short hop in the center of the platform, that's very important, because I'm not going for anything um, like an edge cancel, but I'm going for an aerial interrupt. So right here I start a knee, which is really, uh, really specific timing for this. And the knee puts me on the platform for a full hop. The amount of times Fox got this air dodge, and I was like two frames late or whatever, oh man, it's... It is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I, I kept going and going, and finally, you know how it is, I got there. And I'll get the clip, the Twitch clip for the last one, but I actually don't have the successful, uh, hardest stomp knee recorded on my Twitch, because I hit it off stream. But the amount of times I was live grinding it was absurd. I did this for like a straight month or at least a few weeks every start of my stream i would load up the safe state and i would start doing attempts just for like 30 minutes or something and sometimes i would go over the top it'd be it'd be an hour it'd be two hours you know and i i estimate that i was trying this for maybe a total of eight hours over like the course of a couple of weeks there was a there was a more reliable way to do it but it wasn't fast enough so i had to do the one that would hardly work and is basically just luck and just do it over and over and over and over and over. So I did that. The idea was stomp, do a perfect pixel ledge grab with Falcon, only able to be done on Battlefield, let go of the ledge and knee. It seems pretty simple. As you can imagine, it's not at all. And um, this is the closest I ever got to it on my stream during one of these grinding sessions. Let's check it out. This, this was after like four hours, five hours or something total of doing this for a few days. I mean, this was crazy. And the only reason I didn't hit this on stream is I overlooked that after doing all this crazy tech skill, I wouldn't be able to do a straight jump up. I would be holding forward. And I was fast enough. I am doing the knee and Fox isn't invincible yet. And I'm just in the wrong place. And that felt so bad and I could not accept it. So I just, I kept trying. One morning, this this is the most beautiful story. One one morning, I was about to go into my day job again. I was a clerk at a, a supermarket. I was about to go into my my shift, and I just sat down. I was like, you know what? Like what? I, there's nothing else to do for five minutes before I leave. And I sat down, and I loaded up this save state, and I I tried like three times, and then I was like, okay, whatever, and and. And I was like, all right, well, time to go. Look to my, you know, look at my phone or whatever. Time to go. So I, I loaded it one more time with no intention of, uh, of getting it ever. And just ready to go to my job. <laughs> and I, I did it perfectly. I, I don't know what happened. I just, it was complete luck or something or just the universe wanted it to exist. And um, I, no one watching. I'm alone at my home. And I... Something happened, and I just, I get it, and I just, I recorded the clip on my keyboard, and I just, like, I set my controller down, and just, like, 
sat there for a while. And, like, I, I got a little teary-eyed. I was just like, there's, there's no way. <laughs> and I can show it to you in the, in the video real quick. It's, it's this. And I even said in the difficulty, right? Um, so here's what it looked like when I got it. It was too powerful to be documented uh, on Twitch. And I know this sucks that it's not on stream because people will be skeptical. Like, that's just natural. But the point of the entire series to myself is that I do them myself. I never would task any of this. It doesn't, it doesn't have meaning if I task it. So you're gonna have to trust me on it, but it was such an emotional moment for me when I finally got this. It was actually so beautiful. There you have the hardest 20 nominees and uh, some of the tech skill and some of the story that went into it. The series is the best thing I've ever done on YouTube. It's my favorite project. Uh, this and combo videos. Combo videos are super, super awesome to make. You know, I'll actually throw in an, a bonus announcement here. I've been working on a combo video for like maybe a month and a half now. Um, featuring some incredible people. And I don't know when it will be done, but be really excited because I... I love it. It's really cool. So that can be a surprise for you coming up, hopefully in the summer. And, um, the real announcement. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to announce that the Honda Ways to Stomp Me series isn't necessarily over. Because over the process of making all these, I've had a lot of help from people in my chat, giving me ideas and even explaining how to do things better. I've even had people like PTAS, like, do a task and, ex and tell me this is possible, it's real. You can do it, and so I kept trying, right? I wanted to continue the series with everything I couldn't do and all the ideas that all of you have had. So I made a Discord called 100 Ways to Stomp Me Community Edition, and I'm going to be taking submissions. There's no deadline. I'm going to give everyone the Discord, announce it everywhere. And there's a bunch of information on what I expect, like what the Stomp Knee should have, you know, all the all the things that I believe, all the philosophy for the video. And um, I want all of you to go crazy. Anything you've possibly imagined that you've wanted me to do, anything I didn't do, like, it was a lot of ideas to come up with myself, right? At this point, I'm not run dry, but I'm, I'm nearly there, okay? And I know I need some help. So... It, it's so exciting. This is gonna be so cool, guys. Get in. There's the Discord. Everyone can submit three stomp knees is the gist of it. There's a bunch of details. There's also gray area. You can ask me in the Discord uh, if you think something qualifies or something doesn't. And you get three submissions. And at the end, when there's a lot of them, I will just pick, I'll just pick 100. My favorite 100 that I see. Oh, by the way, you will be submitting stomp knees and names. It's a package deal, okay? You're not just doing the clip. I want you all to ex experience the process that I experienced and how fun it is <laughs> to also name your creation. Extremely excited for, for all of that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit it just like the other Stomini videos and just release it and I'll have, I'll of course credit the person who was submitted in the video, have your name, your Stomini. Um, I can't wait. I hope it comes out sometime this summer uh, with my combo video I'm making. So that's the plan and um, thanks for watching.